Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Buffett and Beyond Stock Analysis Video Podcast with your host, Dr. Joseph Belmonte, which is me, and Debbie with a Y. Hi, Debbie. Hello. (laughs) And all these methodologies are based on the book, Buffett and Beyond, second edition by Dr. Joseph Belmonte and published by Wiley Publishing. And remember, folks, if you want to live on the beach like Jimmy Buffett, you've got to learn how to invest like Warren Buffett. Now, remember, folks, the clean surplus return on equity is both a comparable and a predictability model and is totally different than the traditional accounting return on equity. So don't get them mixed up. And you can equate the clean surplus return on equity as the interest rate you get from a bank. So this is common sense now. A bank account with a higher return or interest rate will earn you more money than an account earning a lower interest rate. So it just follows that portfolios made up of stocks with high clean surplus ROEs or return on equity will outperform other portfolios made up of stocks with lower return on equity or interest rates. So think of your bank account when we talk about these stocks. The good. Stocks that should be in our portfolio. The bad. Stocks that should be in somebody else's portfolio. And the ugly. Oh, stocks that should be in nobody's portfolio. Okay, let's get on with some (laughs) stocks. You'll see exactly how this method works and how we here at Buffett and Beyond set the investing parameters so that you, yeah, all of you can outperform most of the professional money managers out there in investment land. And this week we're going over a retail store because, boy, retail has been in the news all this week. And we're looking over BJ's Wholesale Club. And that stock symbol is BJ, appropriately enough. And remember, folks, if you want to live on the beach like Jimmy Buffett, you've got to learn how to invest even better than Warren Buffett. And let's see what BJ's does, as if you didn't know. Well, it's a wholesale club, and it operates warehouse-style membership stores, just like Costco. And we're going to compare it to Costco, by the way, in this video. And most of the stores are on the east coast of the United States. And as of this past January, the company had 235 club locations, 164 gas stations, You know, that's where you see all the lines in the gas station. And I go to Costco every now and then, or pass by Costco a lot. And those lines are always too long for me. But anyway, they're there. They sell cheap gas and they make money at it. And their concentration is in New York and Florida. It's stores which are usually found in highly populated areas, of course, vary in size from 44,000 to 177,000 square feet. That's a big store, folks. And you know those warehouse stores very well because you have them in Lowe's, you have them in Home Depot, you have them in Walmart, you have them in Costco, and you have them in BJ's. And most of the retail space is leased, and it also manages 10 distribution centers, has six plus million paid club members. See, folks, when you get into business, something you want in your business is recurring income. And I'm just thinking about my AC, my air conditioning, because for $250 a a year, they come in quarterly and change the filter and check a few things and clean out the drains. But they have that recurring income coming in all the time. And that's what Costco does. That's what BJ does. And BJ purchases its merchandise directly from manufacturers, and that's how it gets it so cheap, and it passes those costs on to its paid club members. And at the end of the first month of this year, which means at the end of January, they had 34,000 employees. And now its initial public offering was completed in 2018. So we don't have good public numbers. Well, Let's go on and I'll show you what's going on here. We first had numbers in 2018. Now, of course, the company had been operating before 2018, but they just came public in 2018. And what they had was a negative owner's equity or book value. Owner's equity is synonymous with book value. And how can you have a negative book value if you're just starting out? And the answer is you can't because (laughs) why do they have a negative owner's equity back in 2018, which is the first public number we see? Why was it actually negative? Was because they had been operating before an accounting 
owner's equity or accounting book value is totally different than clean surplus owner's equity or book value. So therefore, we have to, here at Buffett and Beyond Research, we have to come up with a number that gives us a good estimate of what the owner's equity would have been around that time. Now, this is a guess. All right, there's calculations involved in it, and there's two different ways of figuring it out, which are quite complicated, which I won't go into. So, but we had to do that. We had to put that together in order to do that. Well, what if we're wrong? And we're going to see that in the next slide. But let's, right now, let's say it was a dollar ninety-seven. Why it's in red and why it's in bold is because it's to let you know that we might not be right on this owner's equity. Let's go over to net income. You can see the net income has been going up every year, even though we had 2020 where some areas were shut down, other areas weren't, and people were still coming into BJ's Wholesale. It was considered by some a necessary outlet, which was kept open during COVID. We don't know if all the stores stayed open during COVID, but it sure looked like it did, especially when you're looking at 2019 and 2020, and you can see the numbers went up drastically. Well, to uh, over a hundred percent so most of their stores did stay open but let's look at the clean surplus ROE because remember the average stock has a clean surplus ROE of a little under 13 percent for 2023 and this and to get into our growth portfolio we want to see clean surplus ROE around 20 percent so this stock certainly has fit the bill if we are using the right owner's equity in the beginning when they first came public. Now, we're going to see that in the next slide. We're going to see some comparisons. But right now, we're looking at retention rate of 100%, which means all the money they're making, they're putting back into itself in order to grow. It pays no dividend, as we see over here. Now, net income growth and revenue growth is slowing down for 2024, slowed down for 2023. So we're looking at numbers that are a little around average, but the five-year averages are way above the average net income growth. Well, this year for 2023, the net income growth of the average stock in our database is about 3%. Yeah. Revenue growth is still around 7% for the average stock. So for 2023, it's an above average stock. For 2024, we have no clue what the average stock is going to be because they're just starting to come out. The analysts are just starting to come out with estimates of 2024 and of course they don't even know what the estimates for 2023 really will be or what the actual numbers really will be so 2024 is well we we just don't know but how do their economists the, uh, and i'm talking about bj wholesale how do their economists look at the growth or the returns for 2024? And of course, you're going to get numbers all over the place. Revenue growth of 12% over five years is almost double the average stock out there of about 7%. So we can see that net income growth and revenue growth over five year averages have been way better than the average stock. Years to pay debt, Buffett's rule of thumb, if a company takes all the money it makes and uses it to pay off the debt, how many years will it take? He's satisfied with five years or less, less. we're satisfied with three years or less, and this company can pay off its debt in 1.5 years. In other words, we're not worrying about the debt. If interest rates continue to go up, they have no trouble. I'm talking about BJ Wholesale. BJ's has no trouble paying off the increased interest on its debt. And that's what we'd like to see. Now, let's go. Here's what we just looked at over here in the last chart with the beginning owner's equity of one point nine or one dollar and ninety seven cents. But what if we put ten dollars in there? And of course there's no basis for this ten dollars. We have a basis for the dollar ninety seven, but those are our calculations. No basis for the ten dollars. I just put it in there so that you can see what the clean surplus ROE looks like. So we're looking at 20% for three years in a row and then slightly falling for 2023 and falling a little bit more for 2024. Now we do see the clean surplus ROE in our 
main example, starting out with the dollar ninety seven as book value or owner's equity, and we do see the clean surplus ROE going down. However, with our calculations, it's still above twenty percent, so we're satisfied with that. So let's see how BJ's has done in the past twelve months. Because what I'm saying by our calculations is that it's a better than average stock. Black line is the S and P 500, and this yellow line is BJ. So we could say. See, with the average stock up about 8% over the past 12 months, BJ's is up about 24, 20, well, about 23, 24% more than doubling the S&P 500. So this has been a tumultuous year. It has done very well. Over the past five years, yeah, it's done four times better than the S&P 500. Folks, that's a nice, nice return. So we're looking at a pretty good stock here relative to how the market likes it, and the market likes it very, very much. Let's compare Costco, and that stock symbol is COST, and BJ's. And we're looking at, of course, we're looking at the first numbers we have for BJ's is 2018. And we see that BJ's, using our estimate of the beginning book value, is higher than Costco. And if we are right, BJ's should outperform Costco's over the past five years. So let's take a look to see if our calculations might be correct. And I'm talking about that first year in 2018 when we estimated the book value. And what do we see? Black line S&P 500, the blue line is Costco, and the yellow line is BJ's. So we're seeing that we were maybe not exactly correct, but we were pretty close to being correct, if not correct, on the beginning book value and coming up with our, one of our formulas to calculate that book value. And we see that BJ's is definitely outperforming Costco. So therefore, our numbers, which predict the future returns of a company or of a stock, I should say, have proven true in this instance and, and many instances time after time again. So yes, both our picks, we have Costco in our growth portfolio and we're going to put BJ's in one of our portfolios. So stay tuned for that next week. We'll tell you where it's going to go. It may go in more than one portfolio because look at this is 2022. The market was down 19%. And we can see that BJ started right here and ended up here. So while the market was down 19%, BJ's was going up by about that same amount. So very, very nice performance by BJ's. We like it. So we're looking at a defensive stock here. We're looking at a growth stock at the same time. So we like BJ's, we like Costco, and we're starting to like BJ's a little bit better. So there you have it, folks. Well, JB, I think we've just about covered all the questions sent in by our listeners out there in investment land. And remember, folks, we're here to answer your questions not only about individual stocks, but also about the stock market in general. So keep those questions coming, and who knows? We may even answer a question or two you didn't even know you had. And that's about it for today, JB. Okay, folks, we had a great day today. And tomorrow will be even better. All right, bye, folks. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. And remember, folks, if you want to live on the beach like Jimmy Buffett, you've got to learn how to invest like Warren Buffett. We've had a good week, folks, and here's hoping that next week will be even better. You have a safe weekend, and we will see you next time.